So let's look at the first one. On a metric test, Erica mistakenly computed the answer as being 0 0.048, what is K little L? Kiloliters. The answer should have been written in milliliters. How many milliliters are 0 0.048 kiloliters? So I'm going to kind of ask these questions sporadically throughout doing this. What type of measurements are you working with? Mass, volume, or uh, length? Volume. Does everyone agree with that? My next question is, are both of the units metric? Are both of them American? Or are they each? Are they both? They're both metric. So there's two ways you can actually do this problem. You can do it metric to metric, which is just moving the decimal. Or you can do it unit conversion. And I'm going to show you both. Now, and when you're done, you'll be able to say, well, I like one over the other. That's not the one. Let's try this again. You scroll. There's five. So one of the other things you really need to keep in mind is this. What's that little acronym again? Perfect. So I've got to go from kiloliters to milliliters. So what letter am I starting at? Big K. And where am I trying to get to? Little M. So which direction? Right? And it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So what you could do is you could say 0 0.048. And here's what I'm going to do. Watch me roll. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what can you have to fill into those empty loops? Zeros. Now that's one part of this. The other part is what do you do with those two zeros? You get rid of them. So your final answer should have been 48,000 milliliters. Now, how many of you moved the decimal? You rolled the decimal. Very good. Did anybody do it differently than that? I just subtracted. Subtracted? What did you subtract? Okay. Or that. Or, or that. That makes sense. I see what you did. Okay, 6 minus 3. Okay. Now, let me, and I do want you to write this next step down if you've got some room, if you need to flip back over or whatever. But I want to show you there's actually a way to use unit conversion in doing this. And I have a feeling you guys are not going to like the setup, but there are some ratios and relationships I do want you to know. Okay? So 0 0.048 KL. Now, as always, you may not have a clue what to do, but you should at least know where does KL have to go. It's got to go on the bottom. At least. Okay. Now, here is something you should know. Can you go from kiloliters right into liters? Yes. Here's the relationship I want you to memorize. What is the numerical relationship between liters and kiloliters? In one kiloliter, there are a thousand liters. So, so far, what unit has canceled? Why can you not stop there? It asks for milliliters. Now, again, you may not have a clue what you're doing, but do you at least know where liters has to go? Where does it have to go? It's got to go on the bottom. Well, now you just ask yourself, well, can I go from liters to milliliters. Yes, you sure can. This is another relationship I want you guys to know. In one liter, how many milliliters are there? A thousand. There are a thousand. So, if you punch this in your calculator, what do you think your answer is going to be? 48,000. Now, be honest, does this make sense? But which one is easier? The other. Absolutely moving the decimal, right? But this works, okay? So I hate this phrase, it's gross, it's inhumane, but there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? This is more than one way to do this. You've never heard that phrase? You have never heard that before? God, where have y'all been? All right, so that's number five. So let's look at six. Shaquille O'Neal is seven feet, one inch tall. What is his height in meters? Now. This is one of those things I gave you the hint. What was the hint? Convert his height to inches first. So if we have 7 feet, 
I know I can go from feet to inches. What is the relationship between feet and inches? Very good. So what's 7 times 12? 84. 84. Now, this is an important question. Is Shaquille O'Neal 84 inches tall? What is he? He's 85. Very good. Why is he 85? You've got to add that one inch in there. Okay. So that would be 85 inches. I do not need car insurance. I do. Let me call you. <laughs> All right. So now, this is number one. The question then asks you to convert it to meters and centimeters. So let's be honest. Which one of those is easier to convert to first? Definitely centimeters. Now, and I'm going to write it over here. 85 inches. Okay. I may not have a clue what I'm doing, but do I at least know that? At minimum, I know that. So when I get the test and you don't have a clue what you're doing, you better at least do this. At least show me you know you pay, you've been paying a little bit of attention. Okay. So my question is, can I go from inches to centimeters? Yes. Somebody look at your conversion sheet and read me verbatim what it says off of it. Gabriel, do it for me, Gabriel. One inch equals, wait, you want that, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 2.5 square centimeters exactly. Exactly. This is a relationship that is down to the exact measurement. Okay? So in one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. Now, something that I apologize, I forgot to do in the last question, it just naturally happened. Let me go back to it very quickly. How many significant figures were in number five? There are two. You must maintain that. Plus 48,000, two significant figures. Okay. Now, I know this is a weird one, but we're just going to combine that, and we're going to say that's two significant figures. So when you multiply 85 times 2.554, this is the answer you get in the calculator. Two, one. 5.9 centimeters. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're trying to give someone's height, do you really want to round? No, you want to give it an accurate. But if we're just follow the rules, just as a hypothetical situation, but you wouldn't want to round this because, again, we're trying to give someone's precise height, but I'm just going to follow the rules in this case. How many significant figures are in this number? So what would the answer be in two significant figures? Does everyone agree? 220. Okay. Yeah. Now, I hear a lot of the same voices every time I ask these questions. Here's my concern. We're going to get to Friday, and some of you who haven't said a word this entire week are not going to have a clue what you're doing because you're letting other people answer for you. Please ask now if that does not make sense. Don't be scared because you think that you're the only one who doesn't understand. I need everybody to know everyone okay with this? All right. Now, that's 220 centimeters. This is a very easy next question because can you go from centimeters to meters? That's the wrong letter or structure. How do you go from centimeters to meters? Move the decimal. How many places? Which direction? This is milli. One, two. So one, two. So in meters, it should be 2.2 meters. Okay? 2.2 meters. Everybody okay with that? All right, so since, I'm, and I'm glad you're asking this. So what did you do? No, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to come back to that point in just a few minutes. Well, what he did was he went from inches to yards and then yards back, or excuse me, centimeters to, wait, what did you say you did? Okay. Went from feet to inches, yep. then inches to centimeters, yep. and then inches to yards, yep. and then yards to meters. Gotcha, so you did it twice, okay. So what he did is, is fine. That's perfectly acceptable, because guess what? He got the right answer. Or is, is there more than one way to do this problem? And I'm going to talk about the goal in just a minute. When you see the problem we're going to work, I'll explain it in just in a, in a different way. Now, number seven, 
was an easy, straightforward plug and chug, but could you have easily messed this up if you missed the round trip part? Yeah, so you would have gotten the answer wrong because you didn't do what to the 121? You should have doubled it, okay? Again, that's one of those little tricky parts they throw in there at you. So it's 242 kilometers. Now, again, I keep saying the same repetition questions. You have no idea what you're doing, but you at least know what goes where. And it goes, kilometers goes on the bottom. If you leave it just like that, I will be happy versus you leaving it blank. At least give me that. But a simple question. Can you go from kilometers to miles in one step? Yes. yes. Now, what is interesting about this particular conversion factor on your sheet? Don't they give you two different versions? They do. So they give you one kilometer is so many miles and one mile is so many kilometers. But I asked this yesterday. What would you rather multiply or would you rather divide? So if you can put a one on bottom, is that the goal? So in this case, you have the option of getting the one on bottom. How many of you didn't put the one on bottom? Are you still going to get the right answer? You sure are, as long as you plug the numbers in right. So in my case, I put one on bottom. So what's the value on top? 62137. Alright, so let's plug this in. So 242 times 0.62137. And this is the ugly number that pops up in the calculator. Okay, 150.37154. What unit is that? Miles. Now, here's the deal. This is one of those weird, strange, significant figure questions. How many sig figs are in 242? Three. Three. Very important question. Go ahead, Antonio. Yes. As long as you got 150 something, then yes. However you got there, I'm fine with. Because yes, you could have left it at 141. Got here and got whatever this of uh, 75 and then double. That's perfectly acceptable. Okay. But my question is, what is this in two significant figures? Yeah, that's not what I need. Sorry. i already I wrote it earlier and I want to let me let me show you this. I'll see if it was on there still. So is this, are those the same numerical values? But are those the same significant figure values? No. You had to have how many in your answer? Which one is three? So I got some, well I won't say we got in an argument, but we got in a discussion earlier about if there's a decimal, the statement was, doesn't there have to be a zero behind it? No, there doesn't. There does not have to be a zero behind it. And if you don't like putting the decimal, what is the other option you could do? Very good. Instead of this, you could come in and put that. Because here's what their argument was. Well, if I put a decimal, then I have to put a zero. Well, then how many significant figures did that just become? It came four. So that's the issue. Again, I know this is one of those weird things, but what you're telling me with this right here is that it is exactly 150. Can I hand you exactly $150? Please do. Yes, yeah. right? But when you weigh yourself, like I could say I'm about 150, but isn't that plus or minus some digits? Okay, so again, that's kind of where we are, but this is exactly 150. Alright, so we're good with that. Now let's look over at number 8. 8 was very, very straightforward. There was no tricks to it. It says, Alice spilled five, a 5 pound bag of sugar on the floor of her kitchen. What is the sugar's weight in grams? So the other thing I want to ask you is um, pounds and grams. What type of measurement is that? Mass, volume, or length? Mass. Mass. Are they both metric, both English, or uh, a combination? Okay, because grams is metric, pounds is American or English. So, 
Again, same, same silly question. You may not have a clue what you're doing, but at least pound goes where? It's got to go on the bottom. Then you just have to ask yourself the question. Can I go from pounds to grams in one step? Yes. Yes. Okay. What is the pound to gram relationship? One pound is equal to five and a quarter to two, three point five nine grams. Okay. Very good. Now, what are you going to do in your calculator? Multiply. Multiply. This is a pet peeve of mine and how they wrote this problem. I do not like problems with one significant figure. However, we're just going to play along and follow their game. So this is the number that I got in my calculator. So again, let's just play their game. What would you round this to, to one significant figure? 2,000. Is everybody cool with that? Okay, just straight up 2,000. If I had typed this problem in, what I would have said is 5.0. How would your answer then have been recorded? 200. 2,300 three grams. Why three? One, two. And what does the six do? Makes it round up. Again, that's just one of my little things. If I ever ask you a question that you have to be graded on, it will never be one significant figure. Okay? I'll make sure if it's, it's not. All right, let's go down to number nine. Real quick. Anybody, everybody feeling fairly confident? Any issues? Okay. All right. I got a question. Yes, sir. So did this inside unit, unit equilibrium factor? You said that you, you said that you give us a blank piece of paper like this, right? No, not a blank. I'm going to give you this exact sheet of paper again, but it's going to be a clean version. So if you've written on it, you're not going to have your notes. Is what I'm saying. It will look exactly like this. Yeah, no, it's not going to be blank. I'm not that crazy. No, I, I don't even know. Like clearly, I'm asking you guys. I don't memorize these. So I would never ask you guys to memorize that. There are some that I've remembered because I do them so many, so many times, but I would never ask you to know it. All right. Five-year-old Michelle weighs 75 pounds. What is her weight in kilograms? All right. So I've got set. Let's be honest. Do I even really need to do this? Does, somebody, does anybody need me to show you how to do this? It's very easy, right? It should be one step, grams to uh, pounds to kilograms, no problem. Yes, sir. I need to see your work. And there's, I promise you, I know you don't know why, but I promise you there's a reason why, and it's coming next unit. That the process is the important part, not the numbers and the units and all that. It's the process. Okay. No, I need to see your units. I need to see it all. Okay. So I'm glad you asked now. Guys, I need to see your process, the numbers, the units, all of it. You can't just write down a math problem. This is not math class. This is chemistry. So how I'm showing you, now you can use the fence post, but I need to see something like this. Okay? And there, again, you don't know it yet, but there's a train coming down the tracks. So you're going to need this. Okay? All right, number 10. Cheryl, the doctor told Cheryl to drink four liters of water a day. After seven days, how many gallons of water did Cheryl drink? So we've got a lot going on here, right? We've got four liters. We've got four liters per day, so that's one. We've got seven days, that's two. And then they asked me about gallons. So I've got a lot going on in this question. But the only two data points are seven days and four liters per day. So looking at those two units, seven days and then four liters per day. Of the two, which one is more simple, the easier unit to deal with? Which one's easier to deal with? Seven days. So let's start with what we know. Let's start with the easiest. So seven days. I may not have a clue of what I'm doing, but where does days have to go? It's got to go on bottom. Now, the question was, how many what did she drink? Gallons. How many gallons did she drink? Gallons is what type of measurement? Volume. Volume. I am in days. How in the world do I get from a time unit to a volume unit? 
It's the ratio. It's the relationship. So, do you know a relationship between days and volume? What is it? Days and liters. So, in one day, how many liters did she drink? She drank four liters. Now, here's the other issue. First of all, what can we cancel? Days. I'm left currently with what? I'm, I'm left with liters. Why can I not stop? The question was specifically about gallons. Alright? Now, again, I may not have a clue what I'm doing, but I know I have to get rid of liters, correct? Where do I put it? Got to put it on the bottom. So now the question then becomes, can I go from liters to gallons? Yes. I can go from liters to gallons. I get this question every year. What's the abbreviation of gallons? It is G-A-L. Okay, why can't it be just G? Grams. Grams, very good. Now, this is where I need your help. What is the top to bottom ratio here? Top to bottom. All right. That's okay. There's more than one way to do it. But again, there's a process in which I'm trying to show you using the data you have and the relationships you can pull how to plug this in. So I'm gonna, what is 7 times 8? 28. 28 divided by 3.7854. This is the ugly number you get in your calculator. 7.39684. And it goes on a few more digits, but I'm going to stop. Okay. Now, looking at your question, you have the number 4, you have the number 7. How many significant figures should you end up with? Two. One. 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 Just one. So, what is that to one sig fig? So, 7 gallons is your final answer in correct sig figs. Now, again, if this were me, the problem would have two significant figures. So what would it be in two significant figures? 7.4 gallons. Okay, everybody comfortable and confident with that? Okay, 7.4 gallons. Is that a lot of water in a day? Excuse me, is that a lot of water in a week? Yeah. No. No. It's really not. That's one a day. 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 How much is your big water jug? A gallon. It's a gallon. So, what, do you have it with you? No. Alright, so it's, y'all probably seen this. That big old jug. It's one a day. Let me, I want to hear Karen. So, how did you do this? Everybody listen. So, again, I, I notice that you guys are thinking, and that's what I want. So as long as you're able to reason through it, and you're able to determine the right units and cancel everything out, I'm not really overly super concerned about how you get to the result. But again, I'm showing you how a methodical process that always works, never fails, works. Okay? Yes, sir. I'm going to have to look and see what you did. Now, if you just write a bunch of numbers down and no units and I can't follow your math, I'm not going to give you credit. But if I can follow your procedure, I can follow your process, you'll get credit. But again, I want to see something organized. Alright, let's look at number 11. Marcia needs to weigh something in pounds. But the scale she uses only gives weight in grams. The object she wanted to weigh is 60, 61 grams. What's the pound? Do I need to do that? No. That's really straightforward. One step. You put grams on bottom, pounds on top, divide by 453. Right? Real easy. But I do want to do the last one. Now, this one's a little more challenging, and I have a feeling if you got to this one, 
You probably did it a little differently than I did. And if you did, that's okay. Again, it's about process, procedure, and can you figure out what you're doing. So let's look at our data points. I've got a 20 liter tank and I've got a half gallon jug. 20 liter tank and a half gallon jug. This is how my mind works through this problem. I'm starting, and the question is what? How many times must he fill the what? The jug. All right, so again, this is how my mind sees this. I've got 20 liters. Okay? I know liters goes on bottom, and I need to get the gallon. Why do I need to get to gallon? Because he's using a half gallon jug. I'm going to fill numbers in in just a second. Then I can go from gallon, and this is the weird part, to jug. I can go from gallon to jug. Now, the first one is obvious. It's easy. You can look at your conversion sheet. In one gallon, there are 3.7854 liters. The second set of parentheses is where my mind makes it a little strange. In one jug, how many gallons do you have? Half. Uh, you have half. You have half a gallon. Now, somebody said earlier, well, can't you just take and do this, can't you just basically put a half there and put um, 1.4 there? Like, so you half that value and you still get the same answer. So yes, you could absolutely do that. Okay? But I'm showing it in more of a schematical process. So when you do this, the answer you should get, so you do 20 divided by 3.7854, Divided by 0.5 to two significant figures. I'm going to just make this two significant figures. To two significant figures should be 11 jugs or 11 times you have to fill this in. Now, some of you may have rounded it was like 10.5 or 10.6, I think. That's what it is if you, if you work it out. Everybody okay with this? So let's jump down to the sheet that I just gave you, and let's look at let's look at number three. Let's look at number three. Now, so let me start it out this way. What are you going from and to in number three? Gallons to milliliters. What types of measurements are both of those? They're both volume units. Are they both metric? Are they both English? Or are they a combination? They're a combination. So can I really use any decimal rolls to solve this outright? No. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So I've got 10.0 gallons. If you've never heard a word in here, what do you at least know you have to do? Put it on the bottom. All right. Here's where it gets a little different. Look on your sheet, your conversion factor sheet. Can someone tell me exactly from your sheet a relationship from gallons to milliliters? It doesn't exist. Now, here's my real-life connection to this. Anybody like flying? Anybody never get on a plane even if you had to be forced to? Some people don't like flying. That's fair. So here's how I relate this. If I wanted to get to New York City, 
and I drove out to the airport and I flew commercial, which is Delta. What's the only way I can get to New York from Dover? Doing one of my planes. Got to go to Atlanta first, right? So, if I wanted to get to New York City from Dothan, I got to go from Dothan to Atlanta and then Atlanta to New York, right? That's the shortest, fastest way from here. But here's the, here's the interesting question, and I know this is going to sound illogical, but it's still a question. When I fly from Dothan to Atlanta, could I, if I wanted to, then fly to Chicago and then Chicago to New York? I could, right? But that's a waste of money, waste of time. Could I fly from Dothan to Atlanta, Atlanta to L.A., L.A. to Chicago, and then Chicago to New York? Could I do that? I mean, if you're going for a trip, go ahead. If you want to fly, if you just want to fly, go ahead. So what you're all telling me is the goal of these problems is to do them in how many steps? The least, one. The least as possible. Now, if you could do it in one, if I could go out to the Dothan Airport and fly straight to New York, wouldn't that be the best option? But I don't have that option unless I ran a plane, and I don't have that kind of money. Okay. So I've got to just do with what's available. Another real life, I'm going to Minneapolis this summer for a good friend's wedding. Looking at flights the other day, and there's plenty of them. I can drive to Panama City, I can drive to Birmingham, I can drive to Atlanta. But I'm trying to mitigate the drive. But, if you know anything about prices of flights, it's going to cost me more to fly to Dover. Now, is it worth the extra price to cut out six hours worth of a trip to Birmingham or Atlanta? In my mind, it is. I want to eliminate that drive. Okay? So, again, you're only talking about a difference of $200 or $300. So, right now, prices are about the price point you can pull that off. So, that's what I've been looking at. So, I say all of that to do this. When you start working these problems, and I'm going to give you a specific example on this one, actually the next one, no, it is this one, of how you could do it a little different. It's going to take you more steps, but your goal in the end is to do it in how many steps? As few as possible. So let's look at this. I know gallons isn't an option, but let's look at what we have to work with. Again, these are the only things you have to work with. What seems logical for us to go between to get to milliliters? Liters. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to go from gallons to liters next. Somebody help me out. What's my top to bottom numerical ratio for this? All right, in one gallon, there's 3.7854 liters. Now, again, you may not have a clue what you're doing. What just got canceled? Gallons did. What am I left with? Where do I have to put it? Got to put it on the bottom. Again, at least be able to comprehend that concept. You could, but I'm going to show it in this in this format. Okay. Now, can I go from liters to milliliters? This is one of those relationships I'm asking you to know. In one liter, how many milliliters are there? There are a thousand. There are a thousand. So in your calculator, what are you going to do with all of those numbers? Multiply. So 10 times 3.7854 times a thousand equals this number right here. Three, seven, eight, five, four milliliters. Now, that's your calculator number. Look back at the original question. How many significant figures are in that number? There are three. So what should I round this to to correct sig fix? Three, seven, nine, zero, zero. Thirty-seven thousand nine hundred. Does that make sense? Now, let me show you what someone did in third block to prove the point of the flying controversy. Of yes, I can go to I can go to Dothan, can go to Atlanta, but then I can go anywhere in the world and then come back to New York. So here's what he did. I'm gonna come back to this. So what he did is he went, I'm not, I'm not going to plug any numbers in, he went from 10.0 liters, excuse me, that was gallons, right? 
Okay? He went from gallons to quarts, quarts to liters, and then liters to milliliters. Could you do it that way? Does it work? But here's the deal. And this is how I phrase it. Every time you do something, is there more of a chance to make a mistake? Yes. So, if you reduce the number of times you do it, you lessen the number of opportunities for a mistake. Okay? The calculator can cause you a problem. You can accidentally pull the wrong number off of the sheet. So the less times you do something, the less, op less opportunities there are for a mistake. But do you still get there? You still get there. It's just going to take you a little longer. Okay? All right, let's... Here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to practice number 89. And I'm telling you now, there's two ways. 89. 89 kilometers inches, number five, number four. There's two ways to do it. I have a very strong suspicion the way you're going to do it, but I'm going to show you a second way to do it. And at minimum, I take that back. Somebody earlier did it in two, but I don't recommend doing it how she did it. Three is about what you're going to need to get this done. Alternative version when I show you. All right, so I've got um, brown. I've got 80, 89 kilometers. Again, you may not have a clue what you're doing, but what do you at least know? Knows go goes where? Kilometers has to go on bottom. On your conversion sheet, is there a Is there a conversion straight from kilometers straight into my, uh, inches? Is there one from kilometers to inches? No. no, there's not. So typically, we want to try to get from metric to English as fast as possible, right? So what that means is we're probably going to want to go into miles. Now, I'll come back and plug numbers in at the end. What just got canceled? Kilometers. kilometers. I know them in miles. At a minimum, I know what has to go on bottom. Miles. And the reason I can't stop is because I know I'm in inches. Now, what seems to be smaller than miles, but not quite small enough to inches? Feet. Okay, so let's jump into feet next. That's not the right button. Let's try this again. Okay. So my next question is, what just got canceled? Miles. Miles got canceled. I can drop feet in. And then now, even though this is not on there, can you go from feet to inches? Yes. yes, you should know that one. That's one you've known your entire life. That cancels my feet. I'm left in inches. So it just happened to take me three steps to get there. Now I'm going to work backwards. I know without a doubt that in one foot there are 12 inches. Before you fill this in, how many of you knew by heart how many feet were in one mile? How many of you already knew that number? Good. That is a number I encourage you guys to memorize. One mile is 5,280 feet. I just ask you guys, I think it's a good thing for you to know. It's a good relationship. One mile, 5,280 feet. Now, miles to kilometers. On your conversion factor sheet, it's on there twice. So which one makes your math easier? When you put the one where? Bottom. On the bottom. Now, if you didn't, that's okay. You just now have to divide. So what is one kilometer is how many miles? Six to what? Thank you. Okay. So when you do this, the answer you get in your calculator is a really big number. But in two significant figures, you should have gotten 3,500,000 inches. Now, here's the next important question. Even if you didn't get that answer, write it down. The next thing I want you to do is something you're going to have to do with the test. Hey, convert that to scientific notation. Huh? Sorry. Yo, that's easy. Uh -oh. Do that. Yeah, don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. You're going to have to do this on the test. So I want to make sure you remember. Convert that to scientific notation. Sorry, that was really easy. It was easy. Huh? But it came out of nowhere, didn't it? We gotta know how to do it. Let me at least give you one hint. Your exponent is positive or negative. Why? Why is it positive?
positive. That number is greater than 1. I thought you would say it's either positive or negative. Now, the other question is, how many significant figures can you only have? Two. You can only have two. Seven. So it has to be 3.5 times 10 to the something power. Very good. How did you get that? One, two, three, four, five, six. 3.5 times 10 to the sixth power. All right, I have 10 minutes left. Here's what I want to do. I want to show you one of these multi-unit problems. So let's look at number five. 400 and, oh, before I do this, let me go back and show you the alternate way to do this. Three, oh. Watch what I do here. 89 kilometers. Watch this. I'm going to go from kilometers to meters. I'm going to go from meters to centimeters. And I'm going to go from centimeters to inches. Wow. Watch what happens. I know that there is one kilometer, there's a thousand meters. In one meter, there's a hundred centimeters. And in one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. I never even had to consult the sheet. I do. Is this same answer you're going to get? Yep, you don't even have to think about it. So again, there's more than one way to do these. Still took me three steps, but this is easier because all of the factor relationships are easy to be memorized. It's not a bunch of random numbers. This is why the metric system is easier. All right, now let's go down to five. Now, feet per second to miles per hour. Which one of those are you more familiar with? Miles per hour. We don't understand what feet per second is. Does anyone know what things may be measured in feet per second? Walking. Maybe. Possibly. Bullets. Baseballs. Sometimes. Okay. Objects that are thrown. Objects that are moving. Smaller objects. So you have no idea how, quote, fast 459 feet per second is. Well, let's figure it out because you do know miles per hour. Now, here's what I want you to write. Write it down just like this. 459 FT over HR. Now, feet to miles. What type of measurement is that? Length, volume, Length. or mass? Length. Length. Seconds to hours. What unit is that? Or what type of measurement? That's time. Let's start with the top one. Can I go, first of all, I don't know what I'm doing, but feet has to go where? It's got to go on the bottom. And you've already told me I'm trying to get from feet to what? Miles. Miles. Is this the one I asked you to memorize a minute ago? In one mile, there's how many feet? 5,280. 5, so let's look at this. What happened to your feet unit? They canceled. What's left? Nope. Miles an hour. Miles. Is that appropriate for your length unit? So I'm going to stop with that. Now we got to deal with our time unit. I'm going to show you something you've probably never seen. So stay with me on this. Now, the first issue is this. This is new. This is a new concept. Where is ours currently? Therefore, where do I have to put it to get it to cancel? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good catch, Caroline. Very good. My apologies. This is supposed to be seconds. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Caroline. Let's start that over. Where is seconds currently located? Uh, on the bottom. To get rid of it, where must it go? Uh, I'm telling you now, one of you are going to miss that on the test. You're going to put it on the bottom. To get rid of it, it has to go on the top. Now, again, this is a part you've probably never seen before, so let me hold, hold that thought, Colin. I know you're not. I'm going to expand it and teach it to you. Watch what happens. Follow the purple. One hour. To get to seconds, what time unit do we typically need to go through? Minutes. 
So hours to minutes, and then minutes to what? All right, time number wise. In one hour there are 60 minutes. 60 minutes. In one minute there are 60 minutes. What is 60 times 60? Wait, 360. 3,600. 3,600. I forgot. In one hour, there are 3,600 seconds. Again, that's another one of those little cool factors you've probably never seen or never thought about. But you can use it just like that. Now, if you don't want to use the hours, the seconds, by all means, is that okay to add? Absolutely it is. You can do that by all means. But what I want to point out now is what happened to your second unit? Cancel, man. Canceled? Canceled. What are you left with? Specifically, what are you left with? Miles over hours, which is exactly what you wanted. So mathematically, what are you going to do in your calculator? And divide. So 4, 5, 9... So, thank you. The answer in three significant figures is 313 miles per hour. So, is whatever that object is moving, is it going pretty fast? Yeah. Just sure is. Yes. Okay? Now, relative-wise, it may not be going fast. If that's a bullet, that's actually pretty slow. Average velocity of most rifles is around 500. Okay? So, it's, kind of, it's probably like a BB gun. If it's a bullet. It's a car. Okay? If it were a car, again, it's a relative position. So tomorrow, we'll finish up these uh, double units, and then we'll look at the cube and squared units. Don't, don't answer that.